Well, hey there, folks. This is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees. Welcome back to my little bee yard here in southeast Louisiana. All right, well, folks, uh, it's the 19th, and uh, worked on getting honey supers off yesterday, and really just had to go run errands. Got so busy, decided I'm not even going to mess with extracting last night. Uh, it is really nice to get a, get the extraction going once the, uh, while the honey's still warm, but um, you know, fresh off the hives. But I don't keep it super cold in there anyway, and uh, just want to take my time. It's supposed to rain. You can see it's cloudy, but it's actually the sky's getting blue. It's still a good day to be inside and not out. It's very humid, and the bees wouldn't be happy with me being in them anyway. And I really don't have any reason to be in them to begin with. I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish and that was strip supers off the weak hives because I've got the next three to four weeks of just swamped and I usually do not harvest until July and when I go in July, July I like to take everything off break them all down to one and two brood boxes whichever they are and be done with them until uh, summer uh, going into fall when we prepare them for the winter other than that I like to leave them alone so I did get the weak ones stripped and a few of the strong ones stripped because um, we don't want small high beetles moving into the weak ones. We don't want a problem with requeening on some of those that had swarmed. We don't want that because then we lose the honey to either small high beetle larvae or maggots as folks call them or we, um, we lose it to robbing. And uh, why not go ahead and capitalize on what they've got in there and they need to be condensed down. So that's what we did. Got them condensed down. Got 16 supers to extract and uh, then hopefully in about three or four weeks we pull another 10 or 15 uh, hopefully as many as we got now and uh, we call it a day it's uh, it's harvest time over and time to start gearing toward winter that's crazy isn't it wow gearing toward winter this has flown by uh, no robin happened yesterday no robin whatsoever not even in the least bit it took a whole day to clean off some runny spots on the uh, boards that I used to set the supers on on the trailer it took a whole day for them to clean that off, so that was unusual. I'm up here looking at the tallow, and I'm going to show you something. Those, folks, are the secondary. Oh, look at that bee. Didn't like me getting near that tallow. Those are the secondary blooms you get on the tallows. We get them every year. Um, I don't, the bees work them, but I, I just really don't see them putting in a ton of nectar after the main flow is over. Now, we still have a few tallows. That are in the original blooms but uh, I'm sure these help so they're getting nectar from somewhere probably those uh, as well as some clover and there's a lot of wild elderberry still blooming and I, I do they do get uh, honey from wild elderberry not a lot of nectar but they do get it so there wasn't any robbing it was a good day we got them all off then as soon as we got them off the rains came so like I said here's the Sun coming out and that means it's gonna get good and hot it's been cool this morning but like I said there's something still blooming but we were able to get that honey off. That's good. We're, we're, we're uh, get this harvested, and it's gonna actually be kind of nice if we do kind of half now and half again later. Um, instead of trying to do one big harvest, I kind of like that. Um, it gets it makes it a lot easier on me. So let me get in here into the honey house. We got to get busy on this. Um, Want to get it done today so I can get the supers put out uh, for the bees to clean them out and. Uh, Get on with my daily activities. I use Max and equipment not because it's just what I'm only going to use. It just happens to be that everything that every time I shop around, their equipment seems to work out best for me. Uh, the Max and extractor. Um, this is the capping tank, which you'll see me using a little bit. But okay, it's nice. Holds like twenty something frames without the ba uh, with the basket and thirty something without it. I don't know something like that. Uh, I really like this. This was a new addition last year. That I got about four or five years ago. And of course I use a Maxim bottling tank. I really like this thing. Um, this, has been, this has been one of the best additions yet. You know, if you sell honey to somewhat of an extent at all, this is great to have because you keep your honey in bulk and you can bottle it as you need it and it's always warm. I keep it at around 85 to 90 so it's always warm, it doesn't crystallize, and I can always have honey at the ready. Where if you bottle it with 
and stick your bottles off, they get crystallized. Well, then you're fighting that and you're making a heater box. Have one of those too. That little crate down there. So, uh, but that tank is great. And then, of course, I bought the extractor next and this. And I got this hot box right here. Let me show this to you. This was a commercial freezer. I had to, the seal's bad, so I got bungees holding it. I've showed some of y'all this. It has a, a controller here. It's at 90. The temperature's 91 right now. I've got it set for 94. Why I got 94, I don't know. Um, five degree difference. So when it drops to uh, 89, it'll kick on. And that regulates uh, basically a heat lamp. And I keep my honey bottles up here. So those are the excess I do bottle. And I can keep a bucket in there. That's my light stuff this year. I'm keeping a little bit of that separate. But this is this is a good good item to have. So we got these to do. Um, need to get all these extracted. Uh, I'm going to extract some tonight. I'll probably extract some tomorrow. I'm just taking my time, really, guys. There's no hurry to get these boxes back out. So let me get started. Let me get everything set up. I kind of move everything around. and uh, I have a kind of a setup. But I don't have anything permanent. My, my extractor is not bolted down. So I'm very careful about how I balance it. And then uh, I got that chair that I kind of hang out in. And I just kind of move everything where I need it. And I get going. and get some kind of a rhythm going. And once I get that rhythm going, I'm usually rolling on for a few hours. But I'm only going to do a couple hours of extracting today. And then I'm going to finish the rest tomorrow. Let me get going. So, nothing new in what I, in what I do. I do it like everybody else does. Just uh, I use a cold knife. I like these bread knives. Got this years ago with Kelly Bees. Nine frames seem to cut so much better. Let me just. Now I had a commenter tell me lean my frame down. Why well, do lean my frame down? That was on the privet, honey, and I. I thought I explained it well enough in the video, but privet is so doggone sticky. You can lean it down, and it just does that right there. There's some privet mixing this, I'm sure. Because we're going to have a lot of privet left over in our honey. But it's so sticky. I, I guess I, I didn't mean to be short with them. But I was like, I've done a few frames in my time. I mean, I can, I knew to do that. But it, it's just so sticky. And I just go through and do all these frames. And so I don't use a hot knife. Don't like them. Don't, haven't heard, I haven't heard a lot of people that do like them. Um, they get very hot. They don't. They get all clogged up. You're constantly worried about cleaning them off. I don't know. Some people love them. You know, it's like anything. Some people love them. Some people hate them. But I've got proficient enough at the old bread knife that I like it. I like it pretty well. This has got some. This feels like it's got some privet in it. It's not cutting through. When it when you hit the towel, honey, buddy, it glides through. I think this is a mixture. So yeah. So normally I just turn on some music. And uh, see here, cut frames, just get out honey. Would be nice having a capper. I don't like, I like my wax. So, I know a lot of people continue to tell me about the Harmony Farms Uncapper. I know well, well, well about the Harmony Farms Uncapper because the guy that invented it and made it lives about seven miles that way. Uh, Jason, he was in, I was in the club with him for a while. I remember when he first came out, he was telling me about it. But uh, I like my, I like my wax. Some people, they don't worry about the wax in, in the Simple Harmony Farms. It seems to work good. He did a good job with it. He's a beekeeper. He was trying to find something affordable. And it looks like he's got it in all the big stores now. So that's good. But I like my wax. I don't mind cutting them. Ooh, this is pretty. This is thick. It, um, I got a lot of white wax from the cappings that I like to make candles out of. And we, 
Our candles sell pretty well, mostly the small ones. The larger, more expensive don't seem to sell quite as well. But that's why I like this, this method. Lots of honey dripping and we just started. This tank will sit and drain this honey and it will fill up. I'll take these cappings and I'll chop them up, pulverize them up. And then I'll let them set for about three days and the top of them will be pretty dry. Now the bottom will still have honey in them and I don't have a wax spinner so I live with that but uh, I get a lot of it out by just letting it set and pulverizing it. And I stack all these frames up and once I start getting enough, I'll put them in the extractor and then I'll, uh, while it's spinning, I'll fill it on back up and move stuff around and do what it is you do. Let me get all of these uncapped and load this tank up and then we'll start running the extractor. So when I tell you that, um, when I tell you I pulverize this up, that's what I do is I chop it all different ways. I just go through and chop them all up. Cause there's a ton of honey in there. Well, really not a ton, that'd be 2,000 pounds, but you know what I mean. There's a lot of honey left in these cappings. It, but it, surprisingly enough, it drains through them very well. When you chop them up, it makes it drain even faster. So I chop them all up. Obviously, it, it puts the level back down on me because it gets piled up. Because that's only 20 frames, or 19. Um, mm -hmm. But if you take it and spread them all out, chop them all up, every so often they stay settled down and they drain faster to where in a few days this will just be uh, very fluffy and easy to grab and then there's the handy maxim extractor I'll start with these thick ones it does make a difference between the thick and those 10 frame ones 9 frame uh, frames they're a lot heavier so I watch when I balance it and if I know I'm getting to the nine frame ones, which are all marked, because these are new frame, uh, ten frame, I'm sorry, they're all marked with ones because they're for this year, I'll, uh, if I still have some nine frame thick ones left over, I'll just alternate, like a light and a heavy, light and a heavy, light and a heavy. And uh, that seems to work. Of course, there's one really thick one in here right now, so it might be off a little bit. But if it gets off, I just hug it real high, real hard, and hope it don't spin off. So, one thing with balance, and I noticed, is if I'll just start, like, if they're out of balance, I'll just, I'll literally go just till it starts wobbling. And that'll be enough to at least get some of the honey out where they'll start equalizing. And then... You just gotta be patient, and then I'll let it go hard and hard. So this thing will run for 10 minutes sometimes while I'm uncapping other stuff. But this one seems to be pretty good. Not getting a lot of wobble. Just a little bit of wobble, I'll stop it right there. We'll get the excess out, everything will kind of equalize. And I'll go to cut more frames. Because. Gotta do something while we're waiting. And that's what we're here for. Well, and to keep the bees. Yeah.
one of my really old frames. You can see through the light, maybe. See the wires? This is wired wax foundation. I really like wired wax foundation. It's old, and it keeps getting used year after year. They really repair this a lot quicker when there's any wax moth damage, which, you know, there was brood in this. Uh, if it's just honeycomb, they, the wax moths don't mess with it. But boy, I tell you, you talk about drawing out some comb fast. I've, I've, I've contemplated going back to it. I really have. Dry as bone. Can these dry bones live? Yes, they can. More wired wax. I want to show y'all something about this tank. I've done a 10 frame, a 9 frame, and 6 more frames out of that one. And that's not even everything drained yet, plus what's draining off the frames. Check out the amount of honey in this tank already. So while I'm cutting big, thick, fat pieces of wax, ooh, look at that honey coming out. While I'm cutting, that's beautiful. While I'm cutting big, thick slabs, I used to get all nervous about that and go, I'm wasting, and how much will really drain? A lot drains. A whole lot drains. It's already up to there. It, once it gets to here, like I said, that'll be almost a, almost a bucket. About three or four gallons, I mean, at least. This thing holds a lot. I'm happy with my tank I got last year. Ooh, look at that honey. This is why I run nine frames. That's what a nine frame, nine frame frame looks like. Nice and thick, easy to cut. And that's how the whole box is. It's all thick, thick, thick. I use these metal spacers, but you can buy the. I got also got a metal spacer manual they can space the frames with, but um, these make it easy. Only problem with these is your boxes aren't as versatile. So I keep a bunch of 10 frame boxes around too. I'll use my manual spacer. But uh, that way I can run 10 frames if I want to just throw some foundation in real quick. I'll tr I've also drawn foundation in these 9 frame boxes and it works. But it's got to be a really, really strong hive in a very, very heavy flow. So sometimes you want to put the boxes on early. Instead of during the flow and I have a 10 frame box, I'll load them with 10 frames and let them draw that way. Then I'll reduce it to nine frames the next year or for the next flow. But this is the rationale. Oh man, it's a lot of propolis in here, but let me get it out right now. But you see how thick they are. Look at that one. Well folks, that's it for the day. Uh, the same thing I've done over and over um, man the bees are flying the Sun is out the skies are blue beautiful day glad I got those off of there anyway I was going to pull them off this weekend no matter what just had to do it a day earlier so now we're extracting and look the bees are flying two of those wet supers I am going to put on two very very heavily populated hives that I pulled down to two deeps I do want to give them a little bit of room even though in another month they're going to be completely down in two deeps but there is still some stuff out there flowing so let's give them a, a little bit more just in case to put some stuff in give them some space to air out and vent out because they're so strong they'll keep the beetles away and i don't want to overcrowd them too much um, other than that the process is simple uh, we're going to yank all these off get them all out and, and emptied out i'm going to stick them back on the stand 
as you notice at the beginning of the season my stand was full of supers we're gonna start stacking them back up um and that'll be a season i mean it's not a season obviously because just because you get the honey it's you know it's not finished we know that uh the beekeepers know that it's not done we've got to get them on into winter and uh, get them through the golden rod make sure they're fed up for winter make sure they're heavy and they're good to go and they're healthy and they're treated and the mites are all done you know all that good stuff so still a lot of ways to go but man another two to three weeks well another three weeks be yanking off supers completely and wow man this season flew by all right the sun is blazing it is hot out here i want to get out here and um in the sunlight see what the weather was like it's hot I need to get back in there, finish washing up my strainers. I think we got uh, three and a half buckets of honey. So, uh, got to finish up. I got another uh, dozen supers to finish tomorrow. And I just wanted to get it started on today. We'll wrap up that harvest. Let the bees do what they do. We'll pick up again on the next video. But guys, I appreciate y'all coming along. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it wasn't too boring for you. I know I've done an extraction video and I'll do another one. Um, but you know, just vlogging. Just showing you what I'm doing here and there. Some of the special things. So if you did enjoy it, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you don't mind, of course, don't forget to subscribe if you have it. And don't forget to share this video with your friends, family, anybody that just enjoys watching bees. Y'all have a wonderful evening. May the Lord God bless you. We'll see y'all later.